Hey guys, welcome back to Ferro Iron and Customs. I'm Michael. This is day seven of uh, Febu Daily. Um, and today I'm uh, getting started getting into a project that I'm actually going to post the project tomorrow. Um, but the first thing I have to do is get this lift cylinder uh, separated. And I'm going to show y'all how to take a, it's just typical of most any cylinder, is you have a gland nut that holds the gland in, or the gland nut may be part of the gland, or it may have a snap ring inside of it. This cylinder happens to be off of a Mafiat, which a Mafiat is uh, pretty much the same thing as a Princeton or a Palefinger or any kind of piggyback that you would see riding down the road on the back of a truck. And the lift in this has to have a dual operating cylinder because it sticks the forks into the back of the trailer and then the cylinder has to be able to push down to lift the truck up, the fork lift up onto the back of the truck and load the truck. This cylinder, um, the end of it is wore out <clears throat> where the ball goes in it they broke the cylinder and you can't get the parts separate to repair the cylinder this cylinder also didn't have uh, the part number on it and we had it we even had a time getting the parts the actual cylinder itself to replace this so um, that's the reason why I have this cylinder because um, like I said, it was just not feasible to fix it. So, what I'm going to do is show y'all how to take a cylinder apart in this video. Okay guys, first thing we do is there's a grub screw uh, on a Moffitt. Most of the cylinders on a Moffitt have a grub screw holding the, the uh, gland nut on. Most of them have a grub screw holding the piston nut on. So, you need to keep that in mind if you're disassembling one. So what I'm going to do is see if I can get this to turn. It looks like it's been off before. I may end up having to go out in my van and get my pipe wrench to turn this. Um, we're going to try to turn it with a hammer and a chisel. All right, guys, I meant to mention this scrub screw was metric. I don't know if I said that or not. Um, Moffat is a, uh, I believe they're based, I'm pretty sure they're based out of Ireland. So, um, you know, you can, Expect that most of the screws and stuff on them or, or bolts are going to be metric and that pair of channel lock is not going to work All right, let's see what else we can do. Uh, I did move it With the hammer and chisel it is moving guarantee there's a different spanner for almost every cylinder out there. Alright, All right. and that's going off very easy. I'm super, super excited about how easy that came off. Sometimes you have to heat these. Okay guys, I got a bucket underneath the bottom port down there. If this ever stops com starts coming out, we shouldn't have to worry about the oil down there. But being a double action cylinder, it has got oil on both sides of the piston in this thing. Oh, that ain't good. Well, maybe it is good. I'm trying not to make a mess, guys. I am trying not to make a mess. All right, let's go. We're going to say slow. 
and steady wins the race, right? Slow and steady wins the race. Try not to make a mess. If the if this was standing up in the truck, you could get it to fire straight down. Yeah, we're gonna go slow and steady and win the race. That's what we're gonna do. Starting to get a little off balance. I'm gonna push the cylinder back that way a little bit. Um, a dual action cylinder is basically the same. Oh yeah, like what would be in a log splitter or anything where it has hydraulic function in and out. Tilt cylinder on a fork lift. Side shift cylinder on a fork lift. Steering ram on anything that uses a hydraulic steering ram. Like I said, it just it puts pressure one way to create work and it puts pressure the other way to create work in the other direction. All right guys, it's came out far enough that the uh, gland actually started popping out. And that's what I had intended for the oil to come out the end with the piston. For the piston, of course, the oil. All right, and that's it. That's pulling the ram out. All right, guys. Now, if you're going to repack the cylinder, um, you're going to have to remove the the gland from the rod. And the first thing you're going to have to do, that you I mean, of course, you repack the piston which is this part right here. You replace the seals on it. And they just, they're just scarf cut seals. Um, if you're familiar with uh, automatic transmission, it's basically the same thing. Um, just shaped a little differently. Maybe made out of a little different material. But to get this piston off, it's got this big nut on the bottom of it. But don't go, I mean, this is on Moffitt's now. And I've only been working on Moffitt's for about a year now. So, messing with them. But, actually the screw on this one was on the outside. The last one I did, the screw is down here. But there's a screw right there that has to come out for the piston to come off of the rod. And you cannot repack the gland on it without taking the piston off on it. Um, the one that I repacked was actually a, uh, a traverse cylinder on it and somebody had uh, spun that piston out without taking the lock, the grub screw out of it and <laughs> destroyed the threads on the, on the rod. And I think it had like one thread left at the very base of the rod. So we're going to pull that all the way out. If this isn't too hard to pull out, we'll pull it out. For what I need, it does not have to come out. This piston is cast iron, so it is, you know, fairly well not being used to me at all for anything. All right, guys, apparently somebody Loctited this, which is not uncommon. Um, we put Loctite on it to keep it from spinning off. So I ended up getting the torch out <clears throat> and heating it and finally got it to come loose and I also got a little more specialist tools my jaw horse here which is really nice I don't use it a whole lot but if you need it you know it's nice to have yeah so there's some red Loctite in there there was no way that was not coming off without heat let's see it's hot that's it this is no good to me. This chunk of cast iron might as well go right into uh, trash. If you were rebuilding a cylinder, obviously you would not want to damage it. 
um, as best as you could. This next part is looks like a chunk of steel. So we can probably take something out of that. Still, so we can make something out of that and there's the gland now what you would do if you had a seal kit let me back that up what you would do if you had a seal kit is you just pick the seals out it's got a snap ring on this one to hold it in and just change the seals in it um, that is also a piece of mild steel so we may keep that around for something else all right guys um that's it for uh part seven of phoebe daily um so tomorrow y'all get to see why i went through all this trouble of taking this ram apart and uh some of y'all may have already guessed some maybe not but uh i'll see y'all tomorrow